Yum, yum. All right, let's start fusing. This is the easy part. We'll just start with the fan blades because that's going to be super simple. There's only two items, so select them both. And I'm going to go over to the fusion tab and I'm going to click new fusion. And let's give it a name like fusion item uh, fan blades. I think that's fine. And let's hit new fusion with selected meshes. meshes. It's going to do an automatic union between those two. And you can see that though you turn green over here, which means these are uh, unions or additive. And if I push in, you see the fusion item, this uh, triangulated mesh. And Control F is our fusion pie menu with a bunch of super useful fusion uh, centric commands here. So Control F, toggle source vis visibility, will hide those two guys here, our two source meshes. And there you can see our fusion mesh and we'll be able to adjust these uh, miter or these uh, fillets later I'm not gonna do it right now but it's as simple as that there's our first mesh fusion item it's right there and I'm gonna hide that guy and go back up to our face uh, or fan case assembly which is a little more sophisticated and at this time instead of grabbing more than one mesh I'm just gonna grab this uh, our main sort of uh, assembly here and go to new fusion item We'll call it fusion item fan chassis, right? Maybe, I don't know, it's a good name. Hit return, and we're gonna hit new fusion item, and again, turns green. Whoops, we see our, let me just uh, click that. We see our fusion item here. I'm just gonna hide these guys as we add them. Make it a little bit easier. So that's green. It's not really fusing with anything because I just, there's just one mesh in there right now. But I'm going to just grab this guy, just a regular fusion item, and I'm going to actually, before I do this, I'm going to open up a schematic. So let's open up a schematic window so I can kind of see what's going on here. Let's go to uh, Fusion 2. So right now, we just have our fan case going into an intersect and going into a union node. This is what Mesh Fusion is doing behind the scenes. And then that's all going into a fusion item. And so if I select my ring here and I just drag it on top of my green guy and hold I, I see I have some fusion options I could do a fusion apply subtraction I do that and you'll see that it's now been turned purple or violet or pink or whatever you want to call it fuchsia maybe it's been drug and fee, fusion feed negated so the negative uh, output has been plugged into this intersect and that's been plugged into this union, which has been plugged into the fusion item chassis. So if you're not familiar with how mesh fusion works behind the scenes, that's not really what this video is about. It's more about the idea that you don't have to. I just, I'm just keeping this open so you can see what's going on uh, behind the scenes as mesh fusion is, is doing these things. So I think I'm just gonna move this out of the way for now. And if you look, we've got a nice cut there. Again, control F brings up our handy dandy fusion pie menu. I'm gonna toggle the source items. And there's our cut. And so again, if I go in here and select thicken, and I've, I've got my thicken tools here, I could very you know, easily adjust that cut now. And that's what we're going after, right? It's a success. Our experiment is a success. So this mesh operation modification that we're doing is being propagated all the way up through the fusion item. So I say I like that, good. And then I move on. So control F, let's show our wireframes again because they need to be active to do this drag and drop thing. I'm gonna double click escape to you know, drop the uh, thicken there. Let's turn on the main circle cut. So I can do this guy. So I'm gonna drag this guy on and do a subtraction. So there's our main face cut. Now I wanna punch that in a little more, but I'll do that later. Again, uh, you see it turns pink. Let's turn on our screw holes. There's our screw holes, right? So I'm going to um, throw, I'm actually gonna wait on this. I'm gonna actually do my, I'm gonna add my screw sleeves first. So I'm gonna add my screw sleeve. So hold, just drag and do a union. Right, we're gonna apply to the primary. The primary is the main block, the main blob that we're uh, cutting away from. So that's one way to think about it. So I'm gonna add my screw sleeves to the main block, the main cube there, because I may actually cut away at those screw sleeves later with the screw sleeve holes. So I'm gonna add that there. And so there it's added. You can see that's been added there at the wireframes. In fact, if I bring this back up, you can see that this has been added as a primary input. And they've put up another intersection node going into the union node here. So it's mesh fusion is, is, is intelligently adding nodes where it needs to. Is then I could go in here with the screw holes and chop through both of these. So I've got my screw holes here. 
and I can just drag and drop over the primary and I'm going to subtract through everything. And so now my screw holes are subtracting through everything here, right? Looks good. So control F, hide everything, take a quick peek, maybe hide uh, wireframes, looks good. Need to cut in the back next. So I can turn back on wireframes because I need wireframes active to be able to see these wireframes here. So if I have these source items visible but have wireframe off, I can't see the source items. So it's a little, you can get a little confusing there, like where the hell my source items go. Got to have wireframe on. I think that's the limitation, honestly, of Mesh Fusion right now. I'd like to see a drawing style that doesn't require that. In fact, I don't really like the wireframe drawing style. I'd rather see more of a ghosty sort of drawing style where I can adjust the color and the transparency of the wires and the actual solid mesh itself, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, so all that looks pretty good. Let's uh, pop in our back here, our vortex cutter at the back. Again, I'm going to just drag and drop, drag and intersect, or uh, not intersect, subtract. So we're chopping in there. Again, you can see this little chop. So we need to chop in more there and more in the front. So I think that depth is fine, but again, now, we have mesh operations going on here, which is cool. So I can change my vortex uh, here with the mesh operation. So I've got my vortex effector and I could change that to like 75 to get more of a, a you know, a vortexy look. And then I'm just gonna push this front guy in a little more until I hit that intersection. So I push it in. And again, this is very similar to how ZBrush operates. It's just a little bit slower. Or maybe it's a lot slower. I don't know. It's slower. So there we go. I like that depth. If I, if I want that a little bit deeper, I can you know push this in a little more, maybe minus 0.5. A little bit, uh, that's a little too much maybe. Whoops, or not enough. What is it, do I need minus 0.45? Something like that, looks good. Okay, yeah, me likey. Now we have this and the last thing we can do is, and this is all pretty good feedback, once we add strips to the mesh fusion item, and strips are what allows us to adjust the uh, fillets here, it does slow down a fair amount. So strips are something we do later. Also, if you look at the mesh fusion item, let me just hide these guys. If you look at the mesh fusion item here, uh, you'll notice that it's set to draft. And so we can get a better looking model here by turning our like airtight final. And it's gonna improve the tessellation a bit but it also slows down a little. So we do this, we, we usually keep this at draft. Again, it's procedural, so you can change this at the very end when you create a new, uh, when you sort of freeze it down. But for now, I'm going to, let's just show how strips work. Again, Control F for our Pi menu. Create update strips on our selected fusion item. So it's gonna create strips now. You see it's thinking. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about strips and strippers, maybe, I don't know. And so now I can select this strip here, and, and Moto actually does a good job of like hover selecting these guys. So I can, you can see there's a twirl down here now where you've got all the different strips which, which are created at all these intersections. So I can select that, and then I should be able to get like push it again and get a pop-up menu here. Whoops, lost it. Give me my pop-up, and then I'm gonna pin it, pin that some bitch, and then select my strip width, and then I can just uh, drag it in the viewport like so. And now I'm adjusting my Fillets, right? Or is it fillet? I think it's fillet. A fillet of fish. Anyway, this is a fillet. So this is, again, I don't think you can do this very easily in ZBrush. So it, it is maybe a bit of a um, advantage to do these things in Moto like this. But yeah, you can adjust the, uh, the profile as well. Um, sort of like tight to bulgy like that. So it's really flat and then maybe a little bulgy. I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty cool. So I can also do that with these guys. So I can select this guy here. Then I believe I, if I select siblings, it, it grabs a, but it's not a sibling. And maybe I select um, select all strips maybe? I don't know. I don't want all strips. I want sibling strips. And this guy and select sibling substrips. Does that do what I want? Not really. That's fine. I could select hit this and then just, you can see that this is highlighted or I could just press F while hovering over the item list, press F to find that item and I see it's these guys here. It does do an intelligently sort of um, nest them together so they're all selected. And then I could gang, gang adjust them, right? I can gang adjust the width like so. Let me push in a little bit so you see I'm adjusting that, that fillet there, nice and smooth or tight. And again, I can gang adjust the profile, you know, like, like so or like so, whatever. Do what you want, turn on uh, wireframes, get a better view of it. Anyway, that's the gist, that's it. So let me turn on my other mesh item here. 
the fusion fan, and there it is. Mesh fusion. Oh, we can also uh, select our fusion uh, fan blades and then control F to create strips on these guys. And then let's select all the strips. So select that, select all strips, and then I can adjust uh, the filleting on these as well. Just by dragging, you see that um, I'm doing a nice blend there. So that's it. So procedural mesh operations. Then of course I can go in and do stuff like, you know, change the uh, get to my blades here and change the number of, of fan blades in the radial array to like five, and it's all procedural now, which is good. And what I did initially is I'd rigged up some of these channels on the master locator, and uh, just so they're easier to get to. And that's maybe another tutorial. But um, there you go. Eat your heart out, ZBrush. We can do it too, just uh, not as fast. One last thing to note is I can freeze off as many versions from my mesh fusion item as I want to without losing my mesh fusion item. So I can select my fan blades here, this fan blade mesh fusion item, turn on wireframe, and I can turn it to airtight final with parts. It's the highest quality. The parts will give us some useful uh, uh, polygon selection sets to use if we need to. And just do duplicate and convert to mesh. These are the defaults, that's fine. Hit create mesh and it will think for a second. Now I've got my fan blades item, okay, and it hid the mesh fusion object. I can do the same thing with the case, airtight final with parts, duplicate, convert to mesh. Boom, got that. I don't really like that they're both labeled white. Let me change that to nothing. And then I'm just gonna move them over to the side here. Da, da, da. Give those to some poor bastard later for retopology. Um, let's turn back our mesh fusion items back on here. And then I'll say, okay, I want another version. I just want to uh, get the jerk face producer to approve as many as I can off the bat. So I can maybe change the uh, vortex amount back here to something like 95. Looks good, a little more radical. Let's say the number of fan blades, let's do maybe instead of seven, let's do four, because I like even numbers. And you know, do whatever, I can change the uh, level of this miter or not this miter this uh, fillet here so i can just drag that to something maybe a little bit narrower and then i could just save off another version just like i did before so i again just uh, select the the case there and it's already airtight final just duplicate and convert to mesh once it's there let's grab the fan blades and duplicate convert to mesh again with these guys all right, so here's version two. Whoops. Make these guys not white. Group them together, call it uh, fan B. Get these two guys, group them together, call it fan A. And there you go, two different versions, frozen and ready to go. So yeah, you, know, you can always knock off more versions if you have more requests. So there it is. Pretty nice way to work, and as Mesh Fusion, or I'm sorry, not Mesh Fusion, well, as Mesh Fusion gets better, and as Mesh uh, operations or mops get better, um, this way of working is just going to become more and more popular in, in Modo. Yum, yum!